Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Let's take a look at Euler's identity. In this formula, sometimes we use a J instead of an I in electrical engineering. But for this mathematical proof, let's use I. For those of you who are unfamiliar with a Taylor series, here we have a power series of a function f of x around some arbitrary point A. The power series expansion is shown below in white. There is also a special case of the Taylor series called the Maclaurin series, expanded around A is equal to zero. Using our newly derived Maclaurin series, we can use the function f of x is equal to sine of x and find a few of its derivatives, sine of x, cosine of x, negative sine of x, negative cosine of x, and sine of x. After evaluating these derivatives at zero, we can simplify our power series expansion by plugging those values into our equation. This will simplify quite nicely into alternating polynomial terms that go to infinity. This allows us to express a more complicated sinusoidal function as a series of polynomials added together. Pretty powerful, right? In order to display the power of this Maclaurin series, let's take a look at a graph. We can readily see that one polynomial term wouldn't really give us that great of an approximation, unless we're working around the origin. However, as we take more derivatives, our expansion begins to look a lot more like our original sine of x function. Depending on your application, it is possible that you may only need a few polynomials from our Maclaurin series. I'm going to play the animation several times so you get a feel for the approximation. Let us also keep in mind that as we go to infinity, our series is equal to our sine of x function. So, taking a look at another graph, it turns out that you can do a similar Maclaurin series expansion for the cosine of x function. Our first polynomial places us at 1, which isn't the greatest approximation. However, just as before, the more polynomials we add to our expansion, the more accurate our approximation becomes. I didn't do the full derivation for our cosine of x function, but as we move to an exponential function with number e, you can see that its original power series in blue is fairly simple compared to our series of the trig functions. Using our exponential series expansion in white, let's try adding the complex number i to the exponent and see what happens. Let's also keep in mind that i squared is equal to negative 1. If we multiply everything through, we can make some simplifications to our original power series expansion. If you don't recognize the polynomials of this new series, it may help to take a look at our Maclaurin series for sine of x and cosine of x. Looking at our exponential series, you can see that the real values correspond to our cosine of x series, while the polynomials with the i coefficient correspond to the sine of x series. I will highlight these terms for clarity. We can factor out our complex number i and see that the real portion of our e to the ix series is composed of the cosine of x function while the imaginary portion of e to the ix is composed of our sine of x function. We can then plug in our cosine of x and our sine of x and behold Euler's identity in all of its glory. So taking a look at Euler's identity, we may wonder why is this beautiful formula even that important per se? Well, to start off, it has applications in a number of different fields, signal processing, quantum mechanics, complex analysis, vibration and wave phenomena, digital signal processing, and others, just to name a few. So whether you're working in electrical engineering, maybe you're working with AC circuits, or the differential equation of an underdamped spring mass system, or even just trying to take the Laplace transform of a sinusoidal signal, this formula plays a key role in how our world works around us. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and feel free to like and subscribe for more content just like this.